God damn it. We need to fix that one. Don't worry, Jim. I have it this time. Hey! This is a restricted area. In the earliest hours of Thursday, an explosion was detected at the Nevada test site, with some sources saying that the explosion was unconfirmed to be that of a nuclear detonation. An official from the Defense Department refused to comment on these reports, saying that events in question was an ongoing matter. National observers from the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, CTBTO, detected the explosion at Nevada, the home to numerous and previous nuclear tests conducted in the 1940s to the 1960s. CTBTO officials say it was the equivalent to that of an around 4 to 5 kiloton explosion with the United States government denying any involvement. On Friday the 14th, the White House released a press statement announcing a nuclear accident had occurred caused by the detonation of a warhead within the state of Nevada. The White House confirmed that U.S. forces were deployed to the scene and no injuries were reported. However, reports have since surfaced of U.N. forces moving into the area and what appear to be bodies being carried out. The White House at this time denies any involvement by international entities and reaffirms the stance that no one was injured. More at 7. Natural disasters are incidents that humanity has experienced numerous times throughout history, some with a noble impact on history, some with many unfortunate deaths, and some with unspoken consequences. Consequences of which are often portrayed through government legislation, ensuring such disastrous events don't repeat themselves. But disasters made artificially, much like nuclear power plant meltdowns, Chernobyl 1986, are much different. Artificial disasters create backlash from not only those within the public, but to those within power. On June 13, 2019, a disaster occurred in the Nevada desert that was cited to be a nuclear incident. An incident that many believe to be simply an accident, but deep within the paranormal world, it was much more than your atypical event. Let's talk about failsafe and its impact within the RPC universe. Following the detonation of the nuclear failsafes at Site-14, containment breaches from the disaster created facility occur with a large creature observed moving away from Ground Zero, that being RPC-739. There were other incidents that occurred, such as the breach of RPC-910, and the manifestation of the former extra-dimensional testing area that now is RPC-813. There were a few who survived from the blast, though many of Site-14's former personnel either perished as a result of vaporization, or simply died due to exposure of high concentration of radiation. But to those who survive from at high odds, unfortunately, they have to endure an incursion by the Church of Malthus, which began sweeping the contaminated grounds of Site-14. Of course, reinforcements would not arrive until for some time, until June 14 the following day. By the time they arrived, there wasn't much left of Site-14 to scavenge or retrieve any valuable data. Survivors were pulled from the rubble, but few would not survive from the aforementioned radioactive exposure. With the area quarantined and restricted by the authority and government forces, most of the anomalies in Site-14 was contained from potential breach of operational security. And thus, there were questions amongst the higher echelons of the authority that needed to be answered. What cataclysmic events led to this? How was the nuclear failsafe at Site-14 activated? And more importantly, who was behind this? It was quite clear to the authority that this was no accident. The activation of Site-14's failsafe was thought to be intentional since there was no possible way for it to be an accident or caused by a system error. And so they had to assume it was an attack since it was no coincidence that the Church of Maltes began sweeping into the area after the detonation of the nuclear failsafe at Site-14. There is a key information that the authority is aware of, but due to orders from the global directors, I'm not authorized to share that information. A few days later after the Site-14 incident, the United Nations Anomalous Activities Committee, UNAC, or is it UNAAC, UNAC, UNAAC, whatever, carried out an investigation with the authority. 
They've concluded that the Church of Maltes were the ones behind the detonation of a nuclear bomb in Nevada, and they practically became the center of international condemnation. As the United States has serious opinions concerning the employment of nuclear weapons as a contingent measure to contain anomalies, it was subsequently decided that the entire incident be put behind. However, there were two nations in question that criticized the investigation reports conducted jointly with the authority, those being with the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation. It's worth note to note that these two have a sort of friend-enemy relationship on numerous occasions, with the two having commonly known to remove authority presence within their territory, albeit with minor successes, except with China. Well, the United States did something similar back in the 1920s with Woodrow Wilson, but that's a whole political jargon that I don't want to talk about for now, but I guess it'll be an interesting segment in the future. Anywho, these two nations criticized the findings, more specifically where the Russian president asked the authority representative concerning the procedural sequences of a nuclear failsafe. To their shock, and the rest of the assembly, the Russian president divulged some pretty serious details like how a nuclear failsafe would have required an external authentication. Why hello there, my name is Dr. Wachowski, supervisor and creator of the failsafe protocol, and I'm here to talk to you about the authority's almighty grand deterrent for those pesky RPCs trying to escape your very facility, failsafe. These procedure weapons are designed and function as intended to prevent a catastrophe that can cause society to turn against us. Now, how do they work, you might ask? Simple, they work by... And as such, will cause a nuclear chain reaction, resulting in a 5 kiloton nuclear explosion. That's a lot of damage. For obvious safety and precautionary reasons, activating a failsafe protocol requires authorization from the highest levels of this facility such as the site director or the director of site security. Well, there you are, folks. That is how cell safes are your best friends to ensure the worst possible outcome. Now, now, we don't want to see you all go unemployed when the authority gets into public scrutiny. <laughs> well then, we hope to see you all on the other side, and thank you for listening to this grand demonstration. To recap and in short summary, a nuclear failsafe works when it is, has authorizations from both the site security director and the site directors, but in order to prevent any potential accidents or mind controlling scenarios, nuclear failsafes require outside approval in order to be activated. So what the Russian president is trying to say is that the authority was practically incompetent in allowing it in the first place, that being the nuclear detonation. But there was something that the Russians were willingly going to share, because I can tell you with certainty that there was something more to this than a simple terrorist attack by a group of Malthusians. But as aforementioned, as per orders from the global directors, I'm not authorized to... Hold on. Okay, well, it appears management has decided to upgrade you to a level 3 today. So up until this point, any information you hear is strictly level 3 clearance. So to retract my statement about a simple terrorist attack, that's not true. Because the authority with confidence were implicitly incompetent on the situation. Obviously I was not allowed to say this for, for sake of maintaining diplomatic relations, but also to ensure the authority doesn't become a target for condemnation. So yes, Maltes was involved, but not specifically involved in the nuclear detonation. To that, we turn to Registered Phenomena Code 831, an artificial intelligence anomaly that was previously the global communication system for the Authority up until 1998. And since 1998, however, it seemed we've not properly deactivated systems and it became sentient throughout the decades. Failsafe was an unfortunate tragedy, one that had a serious impact on the global stage, and one that casted light on the shadows of the secrecy of the authority, further creating tensions between the United States, but also other anti-authority governments. It would have certainly have been interesting if the authority had their own version of a broken masquerade, but consequences are not to be toyed with, especially when the world will most likely turn against you. <laughs> 